Hey everybody, Marcus C. Williams here. So somebody asked me yesterday, said, why should I vote for you over your competition? And I said, well, that's a very good question. With me, you get me, exactly who I am, exactly who I say I am, who I stand up and am the person that I am all the time. I'm not iffy, I'm not wibble wobbly, I don't flip flop, and I stand strong on my morals and values. So, when I get elected, it'll be the same. People say, oh well, people say that and then they get in there and change, and that's been a big complaint about my opponent. They say, oh well, he got into office and then he changed, and yeah, see, but he's being maneuvered by his party and my party nor nobody else runs me I run me trust and believe I've said some things and taken issue with many things and side my own party and make sure that I'm very vocal on the stuff that I believe is important which I think is important for more people to do but that's a whole nother conversation if we don't stand up for our values and what we believe to be true and what we know to be true and we see issues that need to be addressed but don't address them within our own social groups and in our own community and in our own personal friends groups then we're doing a grave disservice um with me i believe that we need to focus on community first I think that that's very, very, very important. The issues and the needs of the community in my assembly district are not being addressed. Most people are extremely concerned right now with the crime that's running rampant all across our county. It's pretty bad, you guys, if you're watching this and you don't live here in, in Rochester area. Um, the crime is out of control. Our current elected officials have put in laws into place which allow violent criminals to continue to get out of jail over and over again. They've pushed for the defunding of the police with no solution to put in place to actually deter and limit crime. So that's completely against community safety. It's as if they don't care, right? Because I mean, why would they? They don't really get involved and we don't really see them until it's time for election time. And that's really frustrating to me because we've had so many deaths, so many grand, grand theft autos, carjackings, old people beaten in the street. Like, and I laugh to keep from crying, you know, because it's extremely sad. And I've had to use Narcan on multiple people to bring them back from overdoses. And I don't know how many of you guys have had to have such an unfortunate experience, but it's not a positive experience in life. And to see so many people strung out on drugs and overdoses are the largest in my assembly district compared to anywhere else in the county and death by overdose is the highest, as well as regular murders are the highest in my assembly district. So clearly the person that's in the seat right now is not addressing the issues. And that's very, very serious to me. They also believe in defunding the police and they also are very fond of these laws that let criminal back, criminals repeatedly back out on the streets. And it's not just criminals, right? Because we're not talking about people that are on the side of a street selling a dime bag. We're talking about violent offenders, people with multiple assaults, people with illegal weapons charges, and it's just not good. We also have issues with the fact that they don't get any resources, okay? So for instance, they did less is more to let people off parole early and stuff like that, which is a whole nother conversation that needs to be talked about, but if you're gonna let people out, you should be giving them some resources, right? You definitely should. But they give them nothing. They don't prepare them for the outside world. And they wonder when they get back out into society why they're committing more crime. 
I mean, like, you, you don't have to be a genius to know that if you don't help somebody to get them situated, to keep them out of negative interactions, that they're going to go right back to crime because that's all that they know. That's the only way they're going to be able to provide for themselves or that's their comfort zone because the prisons aren't right or good either. And we need comprehensive prison reform, but nobody wants to address that at all. Their whole big concept is, oh, let's close the prisons to save money. Allegedly from the, uh, what do you call it? The um, less is more, we save $678 million. But nobody in the Senate or the Assembly or my Assembly member can tell me where the money is. Where's the money? Where's the money? If we have it, where is it? We have needs in the community. Our kids need stuff that they can do so that they're like activities, like actual active activities, sports, soccer, baseball, basketball, football, okay? We need more of those programs, swimming programs, whatever your sport is, tennis. I remember they used to have all types of stuff when I was little growing up and now it's just mostly gone. So we need to focus on activities for the children and that's a very, very big part of what I stand for and what I believe in and what I will fight for because that's not happening. So when it comes to providing resources for people that are getting out of jail and that are getting out of prison, I look at it kind of the same way I look at the schools. So the schools are in tatters and we don't have trades programs like we need, but it's more than just trades, right? It's actual jobs. So we've got all types of different businesses and companies that are hiring. And I believe very firmly that those businesses should be working in tandem with high schools to train kids to get jobs in their business. So when they get out of school, they can transition right into the workforce and have the job that they've been doing so that they already have gainful employment and thereby they skip over many of those years that a lot of people either waste or end up getting involved in negative stuff that many people don't really recover from in their lifetime. So I think similar programs to what I just pitched to you guys for the schools could also be done for people in prison, but they don't. Everything is after, everything is after. You can't do it after, excuse me. You, sh you shouldn't do it after. You can and they do, but they shouldn't because it needs to be done during so that when people get out or when people finish, then they can go right back and be productive members of society. Because think about how many people get out of jail or out of prison and now they've got a stigma attached to them and they're not able to find a job or jobs are denying them or they don't have the skills for whatever the new job is that is available, because that's another big thing. We might have a lot of jobs, but a lot of the good jobs, people aren't qualified for. I mean, just regular everyday people. I mean, people walking down the street, you, me, whoever else, you know? Because if I see a job listing for a bionic technical engineer, I'm like, I don't really know how to do that, you know? Like, there probably aren't very many people who do really specialize, which is why we need to work with training people for specific jobs, either while they're in prison or while they're in high school. But that requires a whole rethink of the systems that we have, both from the state level for the school and both from the state level for the state prisons but people don't wanna talk about that. And another thing about the prisons is that we call them correctional facilities and rehabilitation centers, but they're not correcting or rehabilitating anybody. It's a serious issue. Um, I, I think that we have serious issues with energy, you know, gas and electric prices are out of control. Uh, fuel for your car. All of these are issues that can be addressed by the state assembly, which are not being addressed. As a matter of fact, the state assembly and even my current member right now actually signed the bill twice 
in the last year to allow RG&E to raise their prices. So that, that's a very serious thing. We have issues with access to fresh food in most many parts of my district. You know, we have transportation issues with no, which nobody wants to talk about. And it's, it's really, really, really a lot of stuff that's not being addressed. And when we hear from the people in Albany, in the Senate and in the assembly, we hear stuff that's what you would call, uh, how do you say it? Um, combative, stuff that's sensational, stuff that's meant to try to make you feel some type of way to tug on your emotions. Usually it's the emotion of anger that they, not positivity, you know? And we need to focus more on pushing positivity into the world because there's just so much negative. So, there's so much more. I, I could go on, but my whole thing in running is to provide simple, feasible, cost-efficient solutions and deliverables to my constituents in my assembly district and fight for that for the whole state. Because when you're in the assembly, you don't only represent your constituents, but you also represent everybody else in the state. So you got to do your best to make sure that you look out for everyone. But I tell you, I'm going to fight for all of the money to come back to my district. No offense. I love the rest of y'all that aren't in my district, but still my dish again, my district has the highest, one of the highest, actually the highest poverty rate in the county and very high considering the whole state. It has the highest overdose deaths, the highest murders in the whole state. So it's really, really serious and people just don't seem to understand because our officials that are elected don't talk about it. They should. They should be working to do something about it, but they're not. And that's why I'm running because I'm tired and sick and tired of seeing everything go a crazy wry. I'm sick and tired of going to go get food and everything costs a million dollars and none of it's made in New York when we grow cows, dairy products, uh, corn, beans, and a billion other agricultural things right here in New York State. How is it that everything costs so much when we make it right here in New York State? How is it that we make these things in New York State and we're not even able to buy the stuff that we make in New York State? You know, those are things that need to be addressed that aren't being addressed. So it's, 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 it's things that are impacting us every day that everybody sees that apparently our current assembly member just refuses to address. You know, community safety, big on that. Lowering the costs of goods and services and the rents that are out of control and the mortgages that have gone crazy. And, you know, the cost of housing is just ridiculous. Whether you're a renter or a property owner, it's out of control. And we need to make sure that we work on moderating that because if we're going to continue at the same rate we're going people are just going to be displaced people and we're not talking about from people not paying their rent we're talking about from people not being able to afford rent or being able to afford their mortgage or being able to afford their taxes and and, and people don't realize how serious taxes are in new york state especially in my area we have the highest tax rate in the whole nation yeah that's a true thing you can look it up so there's a lot of needs and things that we need to address my whole thing is to bring solutions that pretty much anybody can agree with or they're an asshole you know and i definitely would bring everything that's going on back to the people and that's another thing we don't see our assembly person bringing up what's going on to the people Again, they just bring us stuff that's shock and awe and sensationalism. They don't tell us about the stuff that they're sponsoring, the stuff that they're trying to do. They don't, they don't tell us about any of that. They don't tell us about what's happening on the floor. They don't tell us that these bills passed. Why? That's their job. They're supposed to be our representatives. And it's just not happening. And we deserve better.
So that's about me. Um, if you have any questions, reach out, you know, uh, send me an email, marcus at marcusforrochester.com. Uh, message me on Facebook, Marcus C. Williams. You'll find me on the pages. And um, yeah, reach out. Um, definitely check out my website, Marcus the number four Rochester.com. That's Marcus the number four Rochester.com. And if you like what I'm saying, pitch into my campaign, help me make calls, pass out flyers, whatever you can do, or donate because we do need donations. Campaigns don't run on hopes and dreams. I wish they really did, but uh, yeah, definitely. If you can, donate. You could use every penny. I don't care if it's a dollar, $10, $20. $100, $1,000, whatever you can. Do your part to pitch in so that we can actually help restore Rochester, restore New York, and do something to actually better our nation the way that we're supposed to. That's my goal. And I'm not going to promise you, um, oh, everything's going to be fantastic, because I don't believe that that's true. I do believe that we can make awful softer. I do believe we can moderate what's going on and make it not as painful to so many people. I do believe that we can lower the crime and that these aren't like thoughts in my head. These are what are true things. We can lower the crime. We can lower taxes. We can fight for uh, energy economy and an energy grid that works for everybody, okay? Not things that are pricing everybody out of existence. And I'm very strong on small business, very, very strong on small business. I believe that that is going to be the way that we retain not only employment, but also grow our economy locally and keep money in our economy locally. Because, you know, if you have a business here and you live here, you're more likely to hire from here and you're more likely to spend here. So that keeps the money circulating in the economy. And that's a very, very big thing that we need because we see a lot of times the money in Rochester flies out of the economy in Rochester. And we need to make sure that we do our best to keep it here. You guys, be blessed. Be well. Check out my website, MarcusForRochester.com. And it has links to donate, links to volunteer. And it's got all of my social media pages on there. So go check me out. Catch you guys later.